Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering Accelerate 2017. Brought to you by Fortinet. Now here's your host, Lisa Martin. Welcome back to theCUBE. We are SiliconANGLE's flagship live streaming program where we go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise, and we bring it right to you. We are in beautiful Las Vegas with Fortinet. Today, or this week, is their Accelerate 2017 event, and we've been excited to be chatting with a lot of, a lot of their folks and technology partners. Today, we are joined by two gentlemen from Fortinet. First, we have John Madison. You are the Senior Vice President of Products and Solutions. Indeed. Hey, John, thanks Hi. for joining us. We've got Joe Sikora, who is the Vice President of America's Channels. Thanks, Lisa. So guys, a lot of exciting stuff going on today. Just wanted to give the viewers here who haven't had a chance to meet you guys yet, what you're both doing. John, you have a veteran. You are a veteran of over 20 years of experience in at telecom. Least. At least 20. <laughs> um, in IT infrastructure, security, industries, you've lived in Europe and Asia and the US and worked in those. Um, Joe, you oversee a, a quite a big channel of over 7,400 America's partners and the Absolutely. entire channel strategy. Mm -hmm. So you guys are kind of busy. Mm -hmm. little Just bit, a little bit, in say. fact. A little bit. Joe, you're probably pretty proud of this. You were named in 2015 uh, by CRN as one of the 50 most influential channel chiefs. Yes, I was. Did you I get was. like a button or a hat? No, I think it's a t-shirt. Oh, t-shirt. Absolutely. Outstanding. So, <laughs> speaking of t-shirts, I have no segue there. Um, <laughs> wanted to understand, We've been talking to a lot of your folks today, as I mentioned, we talked to your CEO, um, who, who was talking about this third generation of security and kind of where we are today with that. And then we talked to Drew, the CFO, who was really talking about the criticalness of trusting data. With the announcement today, maybe John, I'll throw this to you, the announcement today of the, of the new products and technologies, how are they going to continue to facilitate or enable your customers, direct or indirect, to be able to trust their data? Yeah, so we announced the Fabric last year. Uh, today we announced uh, our operating system 5.6, uh, which is an extension of the Fabric. Uh, we also announced something called intent-based network security, which is the next generation of network security that Ken Z, our founder, talks about. Uh, and then we also announced the third thing is our new security operation solution, which brings together several products uh, for the InfoSec world. So I think all of these come together to make sure that we're continuing that effort to make sure our customers are safer, that they can integrate the fabric into their infrastructure, and obviously that's very important to their brand. Uh, that was going to be one of the things I was going to talk about is, are you seeing that you're making a difference in the brand of a customer. We were talking before we started today, and a lot of you are familiar with some of the, the big breaches. I mean, breaches are a common daily occurrence, but when they start happening in brands that the consumers know who aren't in technology, becomes a suddenly, can I trust this particular brand where I normally go and, and buy household products? So it sounds like the announcements today are really next generation leading you guys to continue to be able to deliver not just that comfort level that your customers need in terms of we can trust our data, but also helping them improve their brand so that their customers trust their brand. Exactly, and so you know the fabric is expanded in that we've expanded it across multiple now uh, attack vectors. So what used to be really focused on the core network, we can now cover email, we can now cover the web, uh, endpoint, and also you can see some of our partners around here. Uh, we've also expanded our fabric ready, so. The Fabric is, has several APIs, multiple APIs that allow different partners to connect into it. And so uh, we haven't announced it totally yet, but we've got six new partners, some big companies like uh, Cisco and HPE actually joining our Fabric Ready program to be part of the Fabric so we can cover the entire infrastructure of any company. Fantastic, so speaking, we'll get to that in a minute, but one of the, the topics that's also come up today is where, as we've seen the evolution of security from perimeter-based security in the 90s to, you know, uh, uh, web security, cloud security, moving towards 2020, and the fact that it's 2017, a little scary, we're pretty close to that, and we're seeing this, this um, explosion and proliferation of mobile devices, of IoT devices, a lot of lack of security there. As we, as we get to that point, one of the other themes that we're hearing a lot about here today is that there is a, a gap in terms of um, of, of resources. What is Fortinet doing to help bridge that gap that your customers are facing when it comes to specifically um, network security programs? 
So one of the programs we launched again a couple of years ago was the Network Security Expert Program, NSE. And uh, in 2016, we had over 30,000 certificates issued on NSC, it's probably one of the largest security programs, because one of the big issues for customers and our partners is just the, uh, the skills gap, uh, cybersecurity. We also actually uh, use a lot of those materials and assets and give them to universities who are starting to do their programs as well. And so uh, that's really essential for our partners to be, be trained uh, at the lowest level in terms of the, the basics, but also we've had about 40 people take part in our network security eight architecture program. You can see them. These are the pins actually we have, which are NSE 1 to, 1 to 7, but the, the uh, NSE 8 are the red ones. And there's about 40 now what we call security solution architects who can go into companies and look at their complete infrastructure and give them an update in terms of security. Excellent, so I want to touch on uh, on the channel for a sure. moment. So Ken talked about uh, the security fabric architecture. You mentioned that it was launched last year. What has been the reaction of the channel? No, it's been absolutely great. It's about mid-year last year is when we announced that. Um, embraced by the channel, in fact, CRN named it the uh, security product of the year for 2016. Oh, fantastic, so congratulations. Very, very proud of that. And that's actually the feedback of the channel partners. Um, it resonates, uh, it's creating new opportunities for our partners. Combine that with the training that John just talked about, I mean, they're armed to really just go out there and, and help solve all those end user programs, and problems what, that we face with. Th thank you, and sorry for interrupting. What are some of the main pain points that, that you're hearing through the channel that customers are experiencing as we start to see um, uh, you know, big attacks that become more and more prevalent. The sure. Dyn attack recently, mm -hmm. uh, DDoS being common types of attacks. Um, as more and more things like critical infrastructures are becoming plugged into corporate networks and more mobile and more IoT, what are some of the pain points that your customers are experiencing and how are they looking to um, resolve and mitigate some of the challenges that they have leveraging the security fabric architecture? Sure, uh, well the attacks are going to happen, right? We know they're going to happen. It's how fast can you react to those attacks, and the fabric actually in arms our partners to just uh, have intelligence on what is actionable, what's not actionable. So we're trying to automate that. Some of the future stuff that we're going to be doing later in the year, it's going to even enable them more. Um, but it's all about simplifying it for our partners to react to what needs to be reacted to. Are you seeing um, from a, an industry perspective, um, we were talking with, uh, with Derek Mankey about, Mankey, excuse me, about um, healthcare being really at the top of, of the at risk mm -hmm. from an industry perspective. But in the general session today, there was a, a CISO panel and there was, Verizon was there, uh, Levi's was there, as well as um, Lazard. We saw uh, Telefonica throughout the event today, the, the Steelers. Are you seeing through the channel, and maybe this is a question for both of you, are you mm -hmm. seeing particular industries at more risk coming to you through your customers' needs, or is it fairly agnostic from a security perspective? Yeah, I think um, on the channel side, obviously everyone's at risk, right? So I think it's the value of those, of the incidences is really more highlighted. So when Derek talks about healthcare, for example, dealing with people's lives is important, and along with your health records. So that's much more valuable than, say, at the Steelers, right? Not being able to get on the guest Wi-Fi. Um, so I think it's, it, I think everyone's at risk. All of our channel partners have different verticals that they go after, and every, it's, it's all the same, it really is. Yeah, I would say the risk is pretty broad across every vertical. I mean, yes, healthcare, the healthcare records are extremely you know, valuable, but also the financial industry. You've also got industrial control systems, for example. You've also got retail, and so I think every vertical, every industry is taking security very, very uh, seriously. And back to your previous question about you know, how is the fabric helping partners, I think previously they had to kind of stitch together a lot of point solutions themselves. Mm -hmm. I think with the fabric it gives them an architecture or a framework. It could be mostly Fortinet gear, it could be Fortinet plus some of their other partners. It helps them put that in place across the entire infrastructure. You bring up a good point, John, that, that was brought up a number of times today and that is the role of, of the CISO um, now being, you know, and, and kind of think, is, is that guy or girl at the lead of the digital army? But that, that person is inheriting, I've, we were seeing a couple of different reports, north of 25 different security t uh, technology, really kind of a patchwork environment. In that kind of situation, where now security is a board level conversation, how is Fortinet direct and through the channel helping that CISO? Is that a, is that a key uh, buyer for you that you, you're helping to figure out, I've got this patchwork here, how do I build it into a fabric or a fabric around it? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, the, what we've seen in the, what I've experienced in the last 10 plus years in, in security is, I'd often go into a room and there'll be the network security people on one side of the table and the security people on the other side of the table with the CISO and the CIO. And I think that, that gradually over the last three years, I've seen more corporations. So now when we have briefings with customers and partners, you'll see both teams together. You'll see a new role inside customers called the security architect that's looking holistically longer term over the security architecture. And one of our announcements today around the Security Operations Center is to do just do that, bring together the, the, the SOC, the InfoSec world, together with the network security world. We did a demo today on stage showing that, bringing together our 40 SIM, our 40 analyzer, with our fabric to, to bring those two worlds together. Because as Joe says, you know, uh, there's a report done by Verizon on their, on their breach report that says, within 60 seconds, you're going to be compromised. You've got basically 60 seconds to stop that threat. And so speed is very important. So, giving our partners this ability to bring together a fabric with Fortinet gear, with our partners gear, and provides very fast protection is very important. Excellent. One of the things too that I found interesting today was learning about what FortiGuard Labs is doing. And I, I read over the weekend what Derek Mankey's team published, the 2017 predictions. Right. Really quite frightening. And, mm. and he was on the show earlier and saying, that they're already seeing a number of these things already in play, that, the, that how much more intelligent malware is getting and the, the pervasiveness of, of the threats there. How are some of the new technologies announced today maybe um, enhancing or uh, what Forte Labs is doing from a threat intelligence perspective? Is that something yeah, that was part a, of? Yeah, that's a really important area mm -hmm. going forward. I think, I think the, the vendor community needs to do better in sharing the threat intelligence. I think today it's in pockets, but I think long term, it's absolutely essential that threat intelligence gets shared across the whole community because with some of the new threats coming, the machine-to-machine -machine threats, the scale and the speed's going to be even more. You saw the Dyn attack last year on DDoS. Yes. That's going to be small compared to some things coming up. So I think longer term, the fabric uh, across the infrastructure and then the security vendors getting together and sharing that threat intelligence so you've got a, a bigger view of the attack surface is absolutely essential to stop the new type of threats. Exactly, and as that attack surface is growing by the day. Yep. So last question uh, before we wrap up here, giving you guys both a chance to answer. At the beginning of your fiscal year, here we are in January, what are you most excited about for the channel in 2017, for example? Sure, um, opportunity, right? For our channel partners, we've got probably one of the strongest channel partners, uh, just the overall. Um, we're aligning, realigning with our field team, so just the resources that all of these partners have. I think the opportunity is great, the market's great. Like you said, you open up anything now and you see, okay, it's been infiltrated, it's been hacked. Um, so I think we, we're all going to have a really good 2017. Fantastic. John, what about you? What are you most excited for? I was most excited about this interview, actually. That's what I was looking <laughs> wow, forward to. Wow, fantastic. Yeah. We'll, said, we'll close there. Said I had to say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's obviously rolling out more of our technology, integrating more of our partners, training more of our partners and helping them you know, with their customers. Fantastic. Well, the buzz and the momentum here, and also the passion for both yourselves and your roles and your peers and your colleagues is really palpable. So I want to thank you both for joining us on theCUBE today. Thank you. And thank we you. wish you the best of luck at the rest of the event. Thanks, Thanks, Lisa. All right, for John and Joe, I'm Lisa Martin. You've been watching theCUBE, but stick around, we'll be right back.